Uh, I just want to give a shout out here quickly uh, to Daniel Grant and Bilal Hafji. Forgive me for my pronunciation there, but guys, well done. You managed to guess the um, temperature correctly, which was 40 degrees on the dam while we were fishing for barbels. So well done to you guys, and we'll have you mentioned here yeah, in the middle of the screen now. Your names will pop up. And just a, a question to the viewers. We're not going to be doing a contest in the comments in this video, but I want to put a question out to you guys, um, and that is, what species would you like me to target, and um, what recipe would you like me to use when I cook it, once I've caught it? Um, mention it down in the comments below, and then I'll mention you in the next video um, if I choose your species and recipe and how I'm going to do it. I'm going to take all the names of all the viewers that comment, and I'm going to put them in a hat and I'm going to draw one out and then I'll hopefully be able to go target that species and produce that recipe of yours and we'll give you a comment in the next video, we'll give you a tag to say that we've gone and targeted your species and that we're using your recipe. So guys, um, enjoy! on the Kharip Dam, ready to launch and go um, have our first day's fishing. We went out and chimed our spots yesterday, so we introduced our guests. We've got Uncle Vili on my left side here. Morning Uncle morning, morning. welcome. And we got Han on the right. Morning, morning, morning. Han is the gentleman that's helped us so much while we've been up here, um, preparing in advance and he's coming out with us on the boat and we've got his son Nathan. Morning Nathan. So yeah, let's go out on the boat and have some fun. I just want to explain to you the chase that we're using here. It's very simple yet very effective. So we've got a swivel at the top, swivel in the middle, got your spring and a very light sinker. Now at the bottom, you'll see we've just got a simple piece of line with two hooks, one on each end. But in the middle, we've got these little rubber stoppers. And this is called a baby shoes chase. But a regular baby shoes chase has a three-way swivel and a hook on each end. And they can't move. But the beauty about this sliding baby shoes is that we, we took the baby shoes and we modified it with these rubbers. Let's say I've got a fish biting on here. Watch what happens. As I hook that fish, the second hook pulls to the end and you fight your fish on there. And you can see the knots are strong so they're not going to fail. And when you get your fish in the boat, you um, the second hook's out the way and you just got to work with the main one. And that one's not going to slide back. Yes, it's free to slide, but generally it won't. So that's how this chase works. So now we just want to put some honey mealies from Wombuta from Awesome Baits. And also you can adjust the length of your... Your hooks here are the drops, but I just like to make them even, even Stevens. I'm just going to get some bait on and chuck her back in. Okay, on the head, we're on with our first carp here for the trip. Got it on that uh, garlic mixture from Um Butter's awesome bait. Seems to be quite a nice carp. Okay guys, so the plan is here, we're going to sacrifice one carp and one barbel on this whole trip. Uh, for a catch hook. <coughs> now in this episode we're going to be catching and cooking some carp uh, but we're only going to sacrifice one of each species because this is our main uh, fishing spot for the internationals that starts next Wednesday. We're currently on Saturday um, but that's the day today and next Wednesday is the first competition day. We don't want to be taking too much fish off the spot yeah um, because yeah we need them for the, for the fishing days. Moi! Now when working with a cop, you need to be careful of that second hook. Often these hooks, while you're unhooking the hook that's in a fish's mouth, they jump in the net and that hook sinks itself into you. Uh, one second, we're going tight here. Okay, we'll handle that now. Let's just get the cop in the hatch. And we'll see you guys later. So we've got some of one butter's honey mealies here from Awesome Baits. Yep. Two per hook. Now see we've got one fun of Mavo hook or a wide gap hook on here and then one um, normal J hook. We're just doing a bit of an experiment, see which hook works best for the carp. 
Um, I mean, they work so well for the barbell. I don't see why they wouldn't work for the cock. B bass. We're gonna take that. We're gonna put our bomb on over here. And then put some B bass on here. Squash it nice and tight around that spring. Get the dip on there. You can see there's green fluorescein inside here, so we don't want to get that on the seats. Wash it in. Watch what happens when I put my hands in the water now with the stuff. Just gonna see different colors. Yeah, there we go. There's the bright green that we were looking for. Let's get her in the water. On dead. We got Jordan on here with another car. Seems to be taking him up on the surface like a like a mall and that's about a tail walk. It'd be quite exciting if you had to rise up for us. Maybe carp number four for the morning now. It's starting to come on the bath nicely. Bubbles there. Okay. Boy. Giving you a lacquer part, eh? Yep. How's that for netting? Moy. You can grab your fish along. So as you guys can see, that's a red flay trace. You got a tray, oh, well not a tray, but a three-way swivel at the top with all coming down. And your piece with your spring. And at the bottom you've got a single coming out. And that's what's called the red flare. This is the one you got to watch out for in the net. This is the one that hooks you ugly. Get that hook out the way. Let me get out the way here. Okay, that boat that you saw approaching just now. Yeah, the guys next to us. It's our Protea yeah, under 16s. We've got uh, Choi up against the steering wheel here. Oki on the right hand side here. And then one Clint at the back there. And they are... Uh, by the way guys, you got a bite on that rod there. Eh? Yeah, these are under 16 guys and they come in and fishing with us a bit on the spot here. What rod's that? It's a bobbler rod. Yeah, the bobbler, yeah. Yeah, I hope so. Is it okay? Watch him, Here we go. Right, watch Tom, release him here for us. Yeah. And Clint, what is your comment? Hey, I don't have much to say, but yeah, well done, Noki. Great fish. What did you catch it on? Spider-Man. Okay, excellent. Spider-Man. Okay. Seems to be the order of the day. Yeah. And what is Spider-Man? It's a fruity, fruity type of bait or uh, mix that you put on the ball. <laughs> We're back here at the slipway now. We've got our carp that we need to clean. Uh, just something you must know about carp when you go fishing for them. As you can see over my finger, there's a quite a big spark here. You can see it's serrated as well uh, on the bottom there. And then on the top here as well, there's another serrated spark. If I run my finger along there, you can see how it's all serrated underneath the skin. If that goes into you, you've got big problems. My dad's already had one go into his toe. And it fessed it up and it can go gangrene if you careful. So we just need to clean it off now. Start scaling it. Uh, the plans that we've got for this cop, um, we have a friend of ours that stays up here in Kharib Dam. He runs the OK Mini Mart. And he's going to turn this fish into a curry for us tonight. To be honest, I've never tried to clean a cop or cook a cop. So it's a little bit out of my playing field, so we're going to have a guest on the show tonight who's going to show us how to cook this. Um, and he says it's going to come out nice, so I'm going to trust him. <laughs> Never tried it, but always a first time for everything. Um, we're all dressed out in our SA kit now, because uh, things are starting to get serious. We are on the spot, we've chummed it, we're just testing the waters, trying to see what the fish are biting on. Um, caught a few carp there now and then. Yeah, we've got a couple of carp here, fishing for bobble with no hooks, just trying to see that they're here, which is actually torture, you just get that pull and it runs and then it lets it go. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to hopefully get these carp going in a tempo. Yeah. To give you an idea of how hot it is, yeah, we've got an umbrella because we no longer have the T-top on the boat. It must be at least 36, 37 out here now, the temperature. I'm going to get a bucket of water over my head now to cool down. Oh. Ooh. That's cold, but that feels good. Moy, let's catch a fish now. Hey guys, here's a beautiful specimen. I'd say this is about four and a half to five kilos, roughly, just a guesstimate. Um, yeah, caught him on some garlic mealies with uh, a homemade mixture on the bomb. This is a common carp. Beautiful specimen. Let's get her back in the water. Hey, and 
we got Jordan on at the back. It's gone underneath by the tail there, but that's the reason that you lose carp sometimes. Because you got the one hook in the mouth, another one hooks in the body, and the one in the body as it shakes, it pulls hook out the mouth and then it pulls a scale out, and that's your carp gone. So when you get a, a single scale coming back on one of your hooks, that's how you know that um, you've lost a carp because of it, because the one's hooked in the body and as it whips itself, it whips the hook out the mouth and the scale out and it's gone. So yeah, there's a, nice another small little carp. We're gonna get our rod set up and cast out again and hopefully we get another one. <sighs> Let's get crack a lack in here. Alright, so Jordan over here has got, a, got himself a yellow fish, a small mouth yellow. Now, um, these fish are the indigenous fish in our rivers. Carp and barbel are invasive species, alien species, but these are indigenous fish in our rivers. Beautiful fish, beautiful colors, very slimy, but a very fun fish, a sporty fish. Uh, catch them on fly and lures, but uh, let's get him back in the water. Hopefully you can get him, maybe a largemouth yellow. Can okay, you put him here? Caught on a little wide gap hook. These little pieces of foam that we soaked in our homemade mixture. You can see it there. And he has the cop inside the net. Just get a release quickly. There we go. Got it. Away she goes. Got is sorted. Oh, you can see that spark, how serrated it is. There's a little copy. Check a spark at the bottom there. Got to be careful for. And on the top here, if you just lift up the fin, Dad, you can see how serrated that is. Okay, let's put her back. We'll come back and catch you in a couple days' time, my friend. Cheers. You want to noodle my fish like a cat? It's coming your way. <laughs> <laughs> Now you have the water quickly, bud. It was like a refreshing. The water's nice here. Did the radiator pack up? Yeah, dude. It's unacceptable, dude. Yeah. It was fine. You don't need a radiator. Not when you got so much water around you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Shimano music. The sweet sound of Shimano music. But just look at the scenery all around us. We've got all these mountains around us. The open plains. There's all sorts it's of game. Relaxed, this beautiful It is water. beautiful. There's Kudu, Irland. Impala, Springbuck, Harta Bias, we've seen all sorts of things there, lots of, lots of ostriches. Yeah, sure. Just great scenery. And on top of it, some great fishing. Very good dam this is. Very good dam. Look at that. Look at those colours. <laughs> There's a little bird's eye view. Staring you in the face. Fish. Send her back. Are that George? We're going to pack up now and head back, go clean the boat, get all the tackle away, go fetch some more chum and come chum a bit later again. Um, and then tomorrow is our first official practice day for the tournament. Like, um, the, like the, the, the tournament starts Wednesday, but it's the first one now where you can take your marker ball out and officially mark your spot so that no one else can come to it. So we're just going to go get ready for that. We're going to get some uh, fresh line from the officials that we can put on our reels. Uh, then tomorrow we're just going to come chum, we're not going to fish much, just to keep the spot uh, going. Keep the fish here, we've got a lot of barbel here. Um, and we just a little tester earlier. We took our barbel trace, our normal anchor trace, and we cut the hook off and put a clip on silver line. And we put the bait in the water without a hook. And we've had about 20, 25 barbel bites today. Just to see that they're still here. That was a big barbel behind us right now. Um, speaking of the devil actually. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so the barbell here, the carp here, we're just going to keep them here now. With not too much time, we're going to slow down with the mounts that we're putting in. And by the time Wednesday comes, we're going to climb in and make pigs of us all. Yeah. Can't wait. I'm sure, we'll, I'm sure we'll do pretty well at the spot. We're quite positive for it. We've been fishing for only a few hours and we've got quite a few fish. So, hopefully we do well. Okay. Now, this that I've got in the bucket right here is our secret barbell chum. It's basically minced up chickens and eggs. But when I say it stinks, it stinks like hell. And to be honest, I, I heave a bit and get the urge to vomit because it stinks. It's unpleasant, but the barb will love it. They come in here in the thousands after the stuff. So I'm going to break the seal. This is not going to be pleasant, but I need to break the seal and get the stuff in the water before we leave. So let's just wish me luck. Oh, 
Okay, never mind, wrong bucket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, please. Whew, that stinks. Yeah. Whew, check out Jordan that side, Batlin. Yes, this stuff smells mank. Let's just take a deep breath. Whew, that's been baking in the sun for a couple of days. Phew! Sometimes this is so bad that it actually boils over. Um, Japs, that is. Sometimes it's so bad. Fresh. It boils over and it pops the seal on fresh the Fresh and butt. ready to go. The stuff bubbles in the buckets from being in the sun, but that's what calls the bubbling, and they love it. So let's just clean this bucket and get out of here, Japs. Get the last bit in, and we can go back. Yeah, we're gonna reverse to the spot this morning, watch. Okay. Sounds like a plan, eh? Alright, so now we have the first official practice day of the tournament. We get two of them here, uh, along with three fishing days. It's our second last day we can have the camera out, because from the, the first fishing day Wednesday, it's going to get quite busy on the boat, uh, fishing for the tournament. But uh, today is Monday, tomorrow is Tuesday, we can have the camera out a bit still, and give you guys some sneak peeks of what's happening. Um, so yeah, there is 30 boats I think in total here, yeah, all around us, uh, and I think it's going to be a good tournament. Okay gents, we have our Protea Anglers here, he has Marius in frame, and at the, on the right hand side at the back we've got Wampoki. This is a Triton, I'm not sure of the exact length, it's about 24 foot, it's got two 2G5 Mercs on the back, the brand new 4 strokes. And this boat moves, it's getting over a hundred, even with all the chum on board. Um, and then in the distance there, you can see that cat, the grey and white cat. Uh, the sea cat, that is the other two gents in the SA Protea side, or the, the senior Protea side. And uh, together that's our four seniors representing the country, your top four in the country. So, keen to see how things go this week. Morning gents, uh, yeah, the, today we're just gonna feed our spots, look at which one of the two are the better one to fish on. Uh, we need to catch, uh, it's 15 uh, carp and 10 barbel, we can get also 15 uh, muddies, but we're not gonna bother with the muddies today or any other day, uh, just go for fill up our carp quickly and then look for barbel. Um, as Ma well, Marius was saying there, you need to get, each day you gotta get, that's your quota of fish to catch. and. I've only seen one mudfish come out in these tournaments, so if you could get one or two mudfish it would be a bonus, but your main thing is to fill your carp and wobble bags and make sure you've got the biggest of each species that you can, um, because obviously the heavier they are and the more you got, the better you're going to do. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, obviously the guys with the faster boats most likely will get the better spot, so we'll go and look for, for one of the best ones today. Okay. Wednesday and the first official competition day for the tournament uh, for the Region 5 Internationals between South Africa and Namibia. We both in our step outs at the moment as we've just come from the opening ceremony uh, and yeah we're just keen to get on the water. Tomorrow's day one and it's uh, a three-day tournament uh, with Friday being the last day. Uh, we're fishing seven to three each day and seven to one on Friday due to uh, prize giving being early and giving guys a chance to pack up. But yeah George what's your thoughts? Bad you keen? Yeah um, I'm pretty ready we've got all of our strategy set up we've put new lines on our reels but yeah hopefully we get some big carp and big barbell and take the win yeah guys so six months worth of preparation has gone into this big day tomorrow 
Um, super excited, it's my last one as an under 21 and as a junior this tournament. So we'd like to go out with a bang. And I'm super excited that I get to earn my, my 10th cap for SA this year. So I'd really like to make this one a good one. Towards it myself, we'd like to get a first place as a team. We'd like a number one and two in the medals individually. And we'd like my dad as top skipper. So we'll keep you guys updated on the internationals good as luck, we go man. along. Just give you a little snippet. Good luck, George. Good luck. Let's kill this thing, bud. Let's go for it. Morning. Mm -hmm. It's your first day of your tournament of the international. Wake up. Jordan, morning. Yeah. morning, morning. First day of your tournament. Mm. Time to get out of bed, guys. Okay. There we go. Come on. Okay, so we are on competition day one. Um, and I've managed to catch my first largemouth yellowfish that I've ever caught. So far today, I'm sitting with five barbell and Jordan's sitting with two carp. And then I managed to catch this bad boy. Okay guys, so there's a largemouth yellow for you. Let's get it back in the water. And there she goes. So we here at uh, Hans' house. How's it Han? Well, and come on, come Melissa. Come. How's it Melissa? How's it Melissa? Um, you'll see the other day we went out with Han and introduced him in the video but unfortunately the weather got a bit rough and it wasn't fishable so um, we had to come back in early and we didn't get a chance to fish but on first competition day today we managed to get a couple fish and Hans gladly uh, offered to help us cook our carp which we've got filleted here. We've got filleted and skinned in the bowl there and he's going to show us how to make a carp curry and just thank you guys for the hospitality tonight and for offering to help us out. Uh, super keen to see how it's going to come out so let's get started. Uh, and mock with an egg just to get it a bit thick so it's not too eggy. So, oh, welcome to the show, Dylan. Okay, and then I'm going to add some fish spice yeah. to the flour. All right, just to add some more flavor. And while that's settling, I'm going to cut up the fish. Small portions, bite-sized portions. A little bit bigger, the way you want it. That's the bones, we don't want the bones inside there. Okay, now I'm going to take some fish spice. And while I'm busy with that, I'm going to just have a sip of beer just to... Got to keep hydrated, mm -hmm. ladies and gents. Hot guy in Karib Dam. It really is. You're making me think this is a piece of cob on the board, yeah? Huh? Well, once you taste it, you won't eat cob again. Okay. I think I'm going to move to curry after this. Okay, a bit of lemon juice. Okay, and while that settles, we're going to move it back to the plate. Cut a bit of onions for the curry sauce. And you must just keep the, like Dylan is doing, just keep the eggs moving. Well done, you, you, you don't want it to get hard, hey? Young chef in the making, yeah. Thanks, Carl. Right. Put on the bride, make some meat smaller. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay, let's go through to the kitchen then. Do the curry sauce. And into the pot and start the gas burner. Put a bit of oil into it. Fry the onions until they're golden brown. While that's going, we can add a bit of salt. Two handfuls, two palmfuls. You want this curry lacquer thick. So if you have to add something to enhance the thickness, then you can add pepper. Also just a bit of pepper, not much. Just to add flavor. Okay, and then this will go for about five minutes until the onions are golden brown. And then we can add the curry. It's going to smell good inside, yeah? <laughs> if it's too dry, add some water, boiling water. Because you don't want the curry to burn in a spot. But it must start off with a bit of a paste. You can see the paste here now. Yeah, it's really starting to smell good, huh? 
Then you're gonna fill it up a bit. Okay. Okay. What you add in there now, hon? Sorry. Okay, what is that? Okay. What exactly is that's, that? That's a spice. Um, Bori is turmeric. Okay. Yeah. So we're basically adding some turmeric in here now. Okay. Then some Worcester sauce. Worcester sauce. Some vinegar. Oh, yes. Alright. Okay. Well, there we go. Now we're going to add the sugar. Sugar also helps it, the sauce to get lacquer thick. You can use this. Recipe for lacquer societies as well. And? Tomato sauce. And you're forgetting something. You're dehydrating, yeah? Hey? There we go. Mm -hmm. Moi. <laughs> well, add some tomato sauce. Also a bit of flavor. And then once all the ingredients are in. Oh uh, yes? It can simmer for about half an hour while we pan fry the fillets in batter. Okay, so I'm just going to move it over to the other side there, on a lower heat, so it can simmer. And that's it for now, guys. Now we can go fry the carp outside. Yeah. What we do is, we get a frying pan with oil in, and you get it lacquer hot, alright? Fish goes quickly, so you just need to get it going and if, if it is too hot, it's going to burn. So, what we do is we put it in the egg first. Right. And we put it in the flour. Egg again. And then the flour. So, it's basically like a, a double batter. Yeah. Batter on batter. That's it. Then you put it in. And you let it fry. This is my dad's recipe. When we were very young. Just a little report while the, while the carp's frying, a little report on the first competition day today. Um, today was meant to be day two, but unfortunately it was only day one because uh, yesterday was a blowout. Uh, so we only fished our first day today. We were a little bit nervous on the water, the carp weren't biting as they should have. Um, now your quota is 15 carp per person, 10 barbel and 15 mudfish. Now mudfish aren't going to be a factor in this tournament, there was only one caught today. Uh, we got 11 caught between us, Jordan got 6, I got 5, and then I got my quota of barbel which was 10, Jordan got 4. So we were a little bit nervous on the water coming back. Um, Namibia got the edge on us as a team, they beat us by 5 kilos, so they hit by 1 point and 5 kilos going into the last day tomorrow. So in effect we have to beat them by 6 kilos or more to win. Um, Jordan managed to get a fourth place in the internationals, well done bud. Well done. And a fifth place in the festival which includes the international teams plus the association teams from the countries that are involved. And for South Africa it will be the Saltbar team which is South African Light Tackle but Angling Association team that they put through of the upcoming anglers. Who are aspiring to be proteas. And then uh, I managed to come first individually in the festival and the internationals. So a little bit nervous, a little bit rough, a little bit good. But nervous for tomorrow we need a guy to cut it so uh yeah a little bit of an update for you guys but we'll show you some more of the prize giving tomorrow night okay now we're gonna turn it over oh, to oh, it's looking lovely golden looking brown amazing there. oh it looks like it does okay so we got granny smith here she's just thickening the sauce with some mazina a little bit of mazina and a and a, a, a push it with a chutney Oh yes. Would you like to taste it? I would love to. Okay. Jeez, is it okay? That is insanely nice. good. Can't be grand secret touch. But you can stick it in the fridge. And then you can do it the day before. Stick oh, it in yes. the fridge. And the next day you can take it out. And you can throw it over your fish. <laughs> no lack, I'm keen to add the fried carp into here now. Yeah. The fish looks uh, golden brown now, so I'm going to take it out. Let's just stand a bit. Can we be naughty and have a little teaser, Jan? Why not? There we go, Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, yeah. I never thought I'd say this, but cop. Hey, it's flipping amazing, that. Now we're going to put the pieces inside. People say it has a muddy taste, but to me, that tastes perfect. Mm. Awesome. Okay, let's take it inside and get the carry sauce on it. Oh, champs, yeah. this is looking pretty yeah. looking good, yeah, let's go. 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 Let's go.
You smell it in the video. How wish you guys could smell the smells that we're spending inside here right now. It's making the mouth water. Put enough in so it can soak in all that flavoring. There we go. Look how that looks. Oof. Chaps. Okay. My goodness me. And then I can live it. Give it about 20 minutes and we can eat. Alright. Okay, so we're going to have a proper little teaser this time. As you can see though, well, here we go. Look at that. Looks just like a piece of fish out the sea. Hey, go for it, who's fish? Carl, go for it. You, you cooked it on, you taste it. You gonna decorate a little piece for me here? Just watch the bones, guys. Okay. Huh? Pretty good, huh? Mm. Oh. Mm. It almost looks like a... Got that white. A white Look at that. Yeah. Hmm? Put that dark on it. I think I just found my favorite fresh water fish to mm. eat, chap. It's actually one of my favorite fish to eat. Oh. Would you just look at that? That's awesome. Now I'm going to throw the last bit of curry sauce in, and then we're going to leave it for 10 minutes, and we're going to serve it. I can say, Jordan and myself are super impressed. We coastal boys, and we feel like moving in and then yeah, to, to live nice. here and catch a couple of carp and cook them. Yeah, come that good. good. There we go, guys. Can't wait to cook. So can't yeah. wait to climb into that. Okay, let's go get some mandal out of the garden for Melissa, so that she can make a salad for us. We've just taken some uh, mint out of the garden. Take about three to four. Let's take a bit extra just for better taste. It's grain all over here. There's some rosemary as well. And let's go give it to Mel so she can make us sell it. Okay, and we've got Melissa over here. Busy making her salad. Okay, Melissa's cutting some fresh mint that we just harvested out the garden. Of a sports championship happening back here. I can see old Jordan's a pro soccer player. What are you doing, Jordan? <laughs> Goalkeeper. My man? No. Stick to fishing, John. <laughs> Stick to fishing. Dancing around the kitchen yeah, while we're trying to make a salad. Ah, no. Losing our concentration. Oh, yes, like I tell you what. Granny Smith is giving us work here. Hectic, but Granny's secret is the secret touch. Granny's secret is the secret no. touch. She asked us to add no. some cheese. Now a lot of people would use feta inside here, but I like the little bit of variation we got going on here. Uh, Denmar's Gouda cheese. There we go. Voila. Okay, Angelica and Melissa, thank you so much for preparing this beautiful garland salad for us. The fish is almost ready. It's been set in for about 15 minutes, another five minutes to go. And then we can dish up. Bas basmati rice. Nice pieces of curried carp that's been lying there for a bit. There we go. I'm ready to eat. Before we dig in, I must say thank you so much uh, for all the help and for having us here tonight. Thank you so much. No problem. Keen to dig into this and, and try it. Looks super good. There we go. Better than the last time I made it. Mm. Good. You definitely wouldn't say that's a piece of carb. That is insane. Fine. Well done. Thanks very much. Enjoy. Carl, where's the fish? Underneath your boat. Look at the three sides of the Champions! Yes, yes. We had prize giving now and we just finished the prize giving. Jordan, well done, my bud. Uh, as you'll see, on the left hand side here, we got the blue, the blue, uh, call it medals. These are for the festival, which includes the international teams as well as the uh, teams from the various associations from the countries that participated. And on the right, these um, yellow ones from the internationals. 
Jordan managed to pull off a third place individual, heaviest individual bag for the tournament, and um, as well as a team gold in both of them. I managed to pull off an individual gold, a team gold, and the heaviest gold for the tournament in both of the competitions. So we're pretty stoked. All in all, we've got 12 gold medals between us. My dad behind the camera there has about nine medals on his aces, some gold, silver, and bronze. So yeah, we're pretty stoked. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share the video. And we'll see you in the next video. Ciao.